1802, the great scientist and explorer Alexander von Humboldt went up a mountain and came down with an idea that changed ecology. Humboldt was determined to reach the summit of Chimborazo, a 6,300 meter high volcano in Ecuador, which at the time was thought to be the highest mountain in the world. A chasm prevented the explorer from reaching the peak, but ever the naturalist, all the way up and all the way back down, Humboldt dutifully collected measurements. Five years later, he published his findings from Chimborazo and other mountains in an epic drawing. Tableau physique, as he called it, depicts what was then a novel concept. That climate is an organizing principle of life, shaping the distinct communities of plants and animals found at different altitudes and latitudes. Climate change affects all kinds of aspects of the world. It affects water, it affects ice, it affects communities of plants and animals. And scientists who are studying the impacts of climate change are finding that Humboldt's holistic approach, um, drawing on many different disciplines to understand how the physical and biological worlds interact, is really the key to understanding how climate change is transforming our world. Even without the historical perspective from Humboldt, it's plain to see that global warming is laying siege to Chimborazo. The volcano's glaciers overall have lost 20% of their surface area since the 1980s. Retreating ice reveals soil, rock, and gravel, ready to be colonized by vegetation. Newly verdant slopes are popping up higher and higher on tropical mountains like Chimborazo throughout the world. So a team decided to use Humboldt's data as he mapped it on the Tableau Physique to figure out how much plants have migrated up the slope of Chimborazo over the past 200 years. The team selected 51 high-altitude plant taxa that Humboldt described in his Tableau Physique and other works from the Andes, and climbed much of the way up the mountain themselves to see where those plants now grow. While Humboldt had recorded an upper limit for seed plants of 4,600 meters, in 2012, the scientists found that the upper limit was nearly 5,200 meters. Other lower living species had moved upslope by an average of more than 500 meters since Humboldt's climb. But not everyone thinks Humboldt's data is reliable enough to base new research on. One group notes that Humboldt spent just a few hours on Chimborazo, that he didn't collect above 3,600 meters, and his sampling wasn't systematic. In fact, they argue that Humboldt transposed measurements he made on a nearby volcano, Antisana, because, well, Chimborazo was the more famous mountain. So, was Humboldt wrong? To reconcile the measurements, scientists recently went to Antisana and using Humboldt's data from the Tableau Physique, um, mapped how much the plants on Antisana had moved upslope. So far, they found that one species, Senecio nivalis, climbed more than 200 vertical meters, in step with the rising snow line. So the rise is perhaps not as dramatic as originally thought based on Humboldt's Tableau, but it still clearly shows a steep jump. Well, climate change also is affecting water that flows down the mountain to communities downslope. In some of the communities in Chimborazo, the flow in the main irrigation channel on the side of the mountain has fallen by about 50% in the last couple of decades. On other parts of the mountain, wells have dried up. And there's at least the suspicion that this has a lot to do with the shrinking of the glaciers. Researchers hope to take their updated understanding of Chimborazo's glaciers and vegetation into a predictive model, which would forecast how continuing glacial retreat will make water scarcer and less reliable for downstream users, not just on Chimborazo, but on glacial mountains everywhere. To accurately reflect the effect of climate change on Chimborazo, Humboldt's classic drawing needs a revision. But his findings continue to energize the latest group of researchers following in his footsteps.